Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at a bunch of questions where we're comparing fractions and decimals. And we'll talk about fun ways of doing that and intuitive ways of doing that. Let's start with this one right here, number 25. It says, and I'll, I'll write it larger up here, uh, 4 fifths and then blank 11 twelfths. Which one is larger and how do you know? Well, in intuitively, 11 twelfths is larger. And talking about the intuition here, imagine you have something like um, a pizza pie or something and it's rectangular right if you cut this pie into five pieces so one two three four and five and you take four fifths right if you look at this what happens well there's this huge gap right here that equals one fifth but with eleven twelfths let's set the same size pie up here what will happen all right, well, this could be 12 pieces now. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's approximate, of course, because, well, I did a bad drawing there. But we have 11 of these 12 equal pieces. Imagine they're all equal, filled in. And what's going to happen is that the gap that remains will be smaller, right? This little piece this one twelfth is not filled in. So that means more is taken up by eleven twelfths than four fifths. So eleven twelfths is larger. Let's move on. The next one we have 14 over 21 versus 10 over 15. So 14 over 21 and 10 fifteenths. Well, these two fractions I feel like now it's a little bit harder to tell using that intuition, but if we reduce these two, we might figure out what's happening. So 10 15 can be reduced. Divide 10 and 15 by 5, and we get what? Well, 2 over 3, it's 2 thirds. Divide 14 and 21 by 7, and what do we get? Well, we get 2 thirds. So these two are equal. These are equal fractions. Okay, so we got 25, 26, and 27. What does that say? We have 7 ninths versus 3 fourths. Again, not as easy to tell. Uh, and I can't reduce these. So now what do I do? Well, there are many ways to compare these fractions. Uh, but what I think probably the, the most common method, at least, whether or not it's the best, is up for debate. But um, here we can find similar denominators. So when do 4 and 9 intersect? An easy way to, to figure it out is to multiply. 4 times 9 is 36. That means that I could rewrite each of these fractions as equivalent fractions with a denominator of 36, and that will allow me to easily compare them. So, what do I do? Well, I'm going to multiply 7 over 9 by 4 over 4. And you can do this because 4 over 4 is just 1, right? Any, anything, like 4 divided by itself is 1 multiply this out, it's still the same fraction because ultimately we're just multiplying it by 1. And over here I'm going to multiply by 9 over 9 because I want to get 36, right? So if I rewrite these two fractions down here, what do I get? Well, this will be 28 over 36, and this will be 27 over 36. They're very close, but 7 ninths is greater because 28 out of 36 is higher than 27 out of 36. All right. Number 28 is nice and easy because we have 2.5 versus 0.259. And, well, 2.5 is over 2, right? It's 2 and a half. So it's 2 holes and a half, whereas 0 0.259 is 0 holes. I'll write 30.17 versus 30.018. Now, this 8. This 1 8 looks bigger than 1 7 because 18 is larger than 17. But in fact, this 1, right, and this 7 are in the same place value. And this 0 and this 1 are in the same place value. Which means that this number, right, is smaller. Right? It has, if you think about change or, or money, right, if we just cut off this 8 for a moment, would you rather have $30.17 or $30.01? Right? Well, I would take this one, this one's larger. So that's bigger. Okay, next one, another decimal. 
we have 0 0.006. I'm not going to write the first zero there. And then 0 0.0060. Does this zero matter? The answer is no. This has a no value, right? It adds, doesn't add or take away value to your decimal, right? I could add in a bunch of zeros after this. But if I add in zeros before, right, that reduces my place value because it forces me to put the six in a lower place. This would be less. But all of these zeros here don't change anything. So in fact, these two things, 0 0.006 and 0 0.0060, are equal. These are equal. All right, 31. 0.45 or 9 twentieths. Here's a fun one to compare because I can change 0.45 into what? Well, this is 45. This is 4 tenths and 5 hundredths. So it's equal to 45 hundredths. It's 45 out of 100. And I like using 100, especially when 9 twentieths can also be written out of 100. So let's rescale that. 9 twentieths multiply the numerator and denominator by 5 effectively not changing the fraction, and what do we get? Well, then we would get 45, right, over 100. So in fact, this decimal and fraction are equal. Two more to go. We have 1 and 3 fourths versus 1.5. Well, 1.5, right, is, you can think of it as 1 and 1 half, right? It's like $1.50. $1.50 is less, or 1 and 1 half is less than, right, one and three fourths, and and part of the I, I like to turn fractions into money when I can as a as a thought process. So three fourths, a fourth is like a quarter, and a quarter is like twenty five cents. So three fourths is a dollar seventy five. But one and three fourths is a dollar seventy five, and that's bigger than a dollar fifty. So in this comparison, the mixed number is larger. Last one, we have one fourth versus one point three. Well, one point three is greater than one-fourth. Why? Well, because one-fourth is less than one, and this is larger than one. This is one and three-tenths, like a dollar thirty versus a quarter. All right, I hope this helped.